Getting a smartphone just under $100 is a daunting and tiresome responsibility, since most budget smartphone producers gimmick on a certain spec to bring the price down below the $100 mark, and today we will be looking at some of the best phones under $100 that offer great value for their money, please make sure to watch till the end of the video so you can choose based on your desired spec. In April 2019, Ulefin launched the Ulefin Note 7. The body of Ulefin Note 7 is made out of plastic. The front side features a drop notch design with a 5 megapixel camera, and the back side features one 8 megapixel main camera and two 2 megapixel cameras for better clarity. The phone handles dual nano SIM card, and it runs on Android 9.0 Pi operating system for better performance. The Ulefin Note 7 features 1.3 GHz quad-core processor with 1 GB of RAM and 16 GB of storage that is enough for basic use and light gaming. It comes with 6.1-inch water drop IPS screen that is great at this price point, and this model supports the Android 9 operating system, which is common in most 2019 and 2020 model smartphones. Overall, the Ulefin Note 7 is a great sub-100 phone that comes with a good battery life that will last long in light usage, that also gives some good stock ringtones, and the speakers are pretty decent. Its downside is it does not support CDMA carriers and does not notify you of any new messages from third-party apps like WhatsApp, Skype, Facebook, YouTube, etc. Released in April 2019, Samsung Galaxy A2 Core has an average 5-inch screen with a PLS TFT LCD display. The screen has a resolution of 540 by 960 pixels and 220 pixels per inch density. But the screen quality of the Galaxy A2 Core is such that images and videos can occasionally be somewhat blurry. For general usage, however, it's largely not a problem. Samsung Galaxy A2 Core smartphone runs on Android V9.0 Pi operating system. The phone is powered by octa-core, 1.6 GHz Cortex-A53 processor. It has 1 GB of RAM which is small and might struggle against some demanding Android games and HD videos. On the storage front this phone houses a 16 GB internal storage and a large expandable 260 GB storage slot is available. On camera front, the front and rear side of the phone features the same 5 megapixel camera. The battery life is also average on this budget section, it is backed by a 2600 mAh battery, convenient enough for browsing the web and watching videos. In terms of SIM card slot this phone support a dual GSM carriers. Overall if you want a budget phone from a very reliable brand this is the phone to consider. Released in 2017 ZTE Blade Z Max is a low-cost phone for phablet lovers. At 6.5 x 3.3 x 0.3 inches without losing any features of a much more expensive Samsung or iPhone. It is the phone that is compared to a tablet because of its huge screen. Design-wise this phone incorporate a set of clicky volume buttons and a ridge power button sit on the right, while the left is home to a SIM and micro SD card reader. To make the bulky build a bit easier to handle, the back of the phone has a grippy texture to keep it from slipping. Also in the back there is 16 megapixel main camera and a secondary 2 megapixel. You'll also find a rear fingerprint sensor that's easy to reach with your index finger. Its fingerprint reader works well, the front side of the phone features an 8 megapixel camera. Although, it certainly is in competition for higher-end handsets, the ZTE Blade Z Max is a mid-range powerhouse in the Metro PCS lineup. For just under $100 you get a big screen and battery, along with capable performance and a dual camera setup that provides capabilities usually only found in more expensive devices. If your budget is just under $40 and you want a phone for call and text that give the basic functionality of a real smartphone, then the Blue Advance A4 is a great option coming with a 4-inch vivid display and a comfortable-to-grip design that is equipped with a great battery life and decent quality camera especially in the daylight. The phone performance is perfect for basic web usage but gets slow for web or Facebook. If you need a cheap and durable phone for calls and text, then you should consider this one. Just for your knowledge, the Blue Advance A4 comes with a quad-core Cortex-A7 processor that clocks up to 1.3 GHz, that gives basic performance. 
and its 512 megabyte of ram is small but expected at this level a 16 gb of internal storage is also available and if you want to hook in an external drive this phone has a capacity of up to 64 gb in addition the operating system in this model is android 6.0 which is expected at this price point Released in 2019, the Blue Studio Mini 5.5 HD is a budget-friendly phone that offer a great value for money. In terms of design the phone comes pre-installed with the Android 9 Pie operating system and features a 5.5-inch curved glass touchscreen display that is just a pleasure to use, although, it doesn't really match the 6.7-inch AMOLED display that you'll find on the Samsung Galaxy A70, but it's still a decent mid-range screen with a 720 by 1400 resolution. Among the first few things you'll notice in the front is its selfie camera and LED flash on the left, while on its back there's a 13 megapixel camera with an LED flash next to it as well. Unfortunately, the phone doesn't come with a fingerprint scanner, but it does sport a micro USB port for charging and includes both a screen protector and a silicone case in its package. In terms of performance the Blue Studio Mini Android phone offers a decent amount of battery life for the regular user, with its 3000 mAh of battery, and if the battery ever develops a problem, it's removable so you'll be able to replace it. The phone also comes equipped with 2GB of RAM to keep it as snappy as the Google Pixel 3a, and 32GB of internal memory that's expandable to 64GB through the micro SD slot. Dual SIM functionality is also supported with this phone, meaning you can opt to have your national carrier in one slot and an international SIM card in another. Released on September 2019 spec almost similarly with Blue Studio Mini, the Blue Studio Mega has a 6-inch display. Although it's not the greatest screen it is fairly large and has a good presence. Photos, videos, and games will really be enjoyed in this screen. It is also suited for productivity use such as creating a business document. The camera and overall body design similarly resembles the Blue Studio Mini, except for this model features a 6-inch bigger screen, which is convenient for content consumption and gaming. Similarly to the Mini model, the Blue Studio Mega support dual SIM slot. With the 1.6 GHz octa-core processing power, the Blue Studio Mega 2019 has high performance, and you will not feel any stress using the vast majority of apps. Even relatively heavy 3D games can be played with hardly any feeling of stress. With 2 GB of RAM, the Blue Studio Mega 2019 has a sufficient amount. Very occasional cases of insufficient RAM do occur, but with this sort of amount of RAM, it will rarely be the cause of feeling any stress. The Nokia 3.1 runs Android 9.0 Pi operating system which is great. While the 5.2-inch screen seems a little small to watch movies or even full-length TV episodes on, content streamed at 720p looks great. The camera is also great for a phone this cheap, the front camera came with 8 megapixel, and the back offer a 13 megapixel camera. The Nokia 3.1 handles games better than it does everyday use. However, this is still a very poor gaming phone, especially as it has just 16 GB of space, over half of which is taken up by Android. If you want more storage, this phone can offer an expandable 256 GB of storage slot. The Nokia's 3.1 seconds house the, the MT6750, an octa-core chipset with 8 Cortex-A53 CPU, with 2 GB of RAM. And the battery on this 5.2-inch device is 2990 mAh that offer an average battery life, in addition this phone support a dual SIM which works well with the GSM carriers. Overall if you want a strong and durable phone that is spec well the Nokia 3.1 is a great option. The Alcatel One's 2020 is an Android smartphone that sits at the top of the brand's most affordable range of handsets. Facial recognition and a fingerprint sensor unlock its 6.22 inches display. Its 32 GB of storage can be expanded using an SD card, and it offers plenty of camera modes for improving the look of your photos. On test, this smartphone's battery lasted throughout 8 hours of video playback and recharged in just under 3 hours. Considering the price tag, the camera is impressive. Shots in natural light were sharp and bright, and close-up shots looked detailed. The portrait mode worked on both the front and rear cameras, blurring the background to make the subject even clearer. Overall, the device looks sleek and is comfortable to hold.
Although this smartphone was faster than some budget competitors, it was still pretty slow at opening apps and browsing the web. Overall the Alcatel One's TCL offers a successful entry-level smartphone, which is particularly convincing in the core competencies telephony, great speaker and battery life. The system performance and memory equipment are quite good for this price range. There is also a dedicated button for the Google Assistant and a radio receiver. Motorola is the king of budget phones for a long time, aside from the rising Asian rivals, pooling more affordable phone for a lot less. Released in February 2020 the Motorola, with the E6 Plus, is certainly attempting to show that it is dedicated to providing something of a luxury experience at least when compared to rivals. While the backplate is plastic, this is a mirror finish with a smooth splash-resistant coating plastic which feels pleasant in the hand. And it is possible to swap the backplate out for other color variants. Beyond the shiny back, there is also the presence of a secondary camera. The primary unit is 13 megapixel and has an aperture of f2.0, which is much larger than is typically found at this price point. It is flanked by a 2 megapixel depth sensor, which is essentially used to capture more accurate portrait shots. On the design front, Motorola goes to great pains to emphasize the ultra-wide display on the front of the Moto E6 Plus. It has a small notch hiding the 8 megapixel selfie camera, but despite this the panel is certainly expansive, reaching 6.1 inches on the diagonal. It is also worth mentioning the inclusion of a fingerprint scanner, which is not always a given under $100, but certainly always welcome. This phone also takes micro SIM cards, not nano SIM cards, though luckily there is an adapter in the box. As for the performance this phone comes with a MediaTek Helio P22 CPU, which is common in most budget phones, it run on Android 9.0 Pi operating system, this phone also offer a 2GB of RAM which is small, but enough for light gaming and watching videos, it also offer a 32GB of storage, with an expandable 512GB of storage slot. On the plus side, this phone features a hotspot and FM radio. Released in September 2019 the Blue Vivo X5 is the best phone for its price, design-wise, the back covers are very reminiscent of the one on the Galaxy Note 3. There's a faux leather texture that make it look cheap, the bottom side of the phone features a USB charging ports, 3.5mm headphone jacks, the back side houses a fingerprint reader, an iPhone X-like camera placement with a 13 megapixel camera that offers a decent depth and sharp images. The front side of the phone features an 8 megapixel camera with a dedicated flashlight. Performance wise, this phone's run on MediaTek Octa Core CPUs with max clock speeds at 1.6 GHz. Blue also made this phone attractive by adding a 3 GB of RAM and 64 GB storage, with support for 64 GB expandable micro SD card slot. In terms of battery this phone comes with a 2800mAh removable battery, it might not be a champion on this list, but it should last a day though. Overall, the X5 is a capable enough daily phone for just under $100, and you could make it work as a daily use device.